On the 5th of October, the Norwegian author Jan Foss was announced as the recipient for the 2023 Nobel Prize in Literature. According to the Swedish Academy, he was awarded in their own words for his innovative plays and prose which give voice to the unsayable. Personally, I have never read Jan Foss. I have never heard of Jan Foss. And this is actually not very common for the Nobel Prize. They sometimes give the awards for authors that are well known. A lot of works, they wrote a lot of works, a lot of them have been translated to English or they have been translated to my native language, Portuguese. But they also have a tendency of awarding the prize to some kind of unknown, more niche authors. Jan Foss, I would say it's in one of those more on the niche side. And over the past two, three years, maybe, I'm not even like 100% sure, the years have been becoming kind of like timelines of years, have become kind of murky throughout the pandemic. So like two, three years, I have been making my way into reading a bit of of each Nobel Prize winning author in literature and so far I liked most of what I read but going back to the theme of the video so maybe I enjoy Jan Foss by the way if I'm pronouncing his name wrong I'm sorry but I don't speak Norwegian so maybe I'll pronounce some names wrong actually we have to translate don't we Jan Foss Jan Foss so basically what is this video about Carol like why are you saying this stuff? Basically, I'm I'm reading one of Jan Fosse's book. When I went to search for his books, he didn't have that many that were translated. I don't speak Norwegian, and the books that in languages that I can understand, there weren't that many varieties to choose from at the time. I read and bought. The book by the way because probably we already have some a lot of new books by him or old books being newly translated or going back in stock but when i went to search for them which was on the 5th of october by the way some of them were like 700 pages long and at the time I'm not looking forward to reading a 700 page long book from a guy I never heard about and I'm not sure if I like his prose. So basically the thought process was I want to read a book by this guy, I don't want a 700 page book by this guy. So what can I get that would fit in this in between? So I found this book called Alice at the Fire. I got it, I got it on Kindle because at the time it wasn't easily available on print, but now I believe it is. By the time this video will be out, it probably will be already very easily available in print, but then it might have already sold out because he won the Nobel Prize and he will be writing to it. But I want to get first on the bandwagon, okay? So I got Alice at the Fire. So what at least the fire is about. It's I think 120, 130 pages long, so it's not a long book. It's about uh, this woman called Sin. Translate because Norwegian. Signa. 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 Yeah, this name. This lady, she lives in an old house by the fjords. She basically. This book is her reminiscing, remembering or following her memories from her, I believe it's her late husband who is called Asla. Asla. So it takes place in the countryside of Norway and it's about this old woman remembering her husband. Uh, apparently, it's a vivid hallucinatory prose where all the moments in time inhabit the same space and the ghosts of the past collide with those who still live on. This book, 
according to the little description on Amazon, is a visionary masterpiece, a haunting exploration of love and loss that ranks among the greatest meditations on marriage and human faith. Okay, so the About Book section on Kindle says a typical time to read this book is one hour and 42 minutes, so I think it might be doable for me to film the whole reading process, but I'm not sure. Let's try it. About the book also says it has 85 Kindle pages, which it's less, I think, than the physical copy, but let's start. So my first impression about this book is that when the phrases are long, say then the paragraphs or the paragraph is very long. By the way, I'm currently on page seven, which is equivalent to five percent of the book. It, it's long, the phrase, the paragraph, and there's something about the writing. It's unique, but it's also familiar in a way. The first thing that came in my head is that it reminded me a bit of Virginia Woolf in the sense that it's like full of thoughts. But at the same time, it reminds me of Virginia Woolf. It doesn't remind me of Virginia Woolf. It's kind of hard to explain right now. Maybe I'll have a better, clearer idea of what this writing style is reminding me of at the end of the book. Also, so far, the narrator is someone that it's outside seen, so it's not. I thought it would be seen herself, seen which is the wife or things. I don't. I have problems with this word. The wife that keeps remembering her husband, but no, who narrates it's someone outside. I'm not sure if it's a real person that it's watching her. I'm not sure if it's kind of. A god style narrator, someone that doesn't exist in the physical world, but it's like a conscious example. You know how Emily Henry has an incredible painter? Yeah, the painter in this book, we got a first glimpse of it. It's not giving. The painter is not giving, and I'm not sure if it's something about being Norwegian, the fact that this is a Norwegian novel and I'm not used to Norwegian novels. I don't think I ever read a book from an author that was part of Norway. It's not that I can remember, I'm looking at my bookshelf right now and nothing... I don't find one. I think, no, I found one but it's non-fiction, it's not, it, it's not fiction. But the only other Norwegian author is on my bookshelf is philosophy. But I don't know. The, <laughs> the panther is not giving. I know this is not also I know this is not a romance novel. But the panther is not giving. Maybe it gets better. Okay, so I read a little bit more. I'm around 300, 300. I'm around 30% into this book and yeah, I think I think I know what this book is remembering or the author of this book is reminding me. It's like a blend of Virginia Woolf with Saramago in the sense that so far the narrative seems to be very much like a stream of consciousness. You travel to the point of view this it's kind of it's an outside narrator it's like it's like god it's like you are playing the sims and you are watching something but throughout the narrative you keep changing the time you go from what is happening in the present to what happened in the past and it's like you keep switching characters so at one moment you are like the player playing a sim or the other you are the player playing as I, I was, I, I don't know, I keep forgetting how to pronounce this name, sorry, I don't speak Norwegian. And I get why they described this book as feeling kind of hallucinatory, and the hallucinatory part is in part because of the 
Brazils. This book, the, or the writing of this book, is reminding me a bit of Saramago in the sense that the paragraphs are so, so long and the font on my Kindle is actually it's not big, it's quite small and yet the paragraphs are so long, sometimes takes like pages and pages and pages on the Kindle for us to finish a paragraph also the sentences are so long and the punctuation like it doesn't follow traditional rules of punctuation which is something Saramago uses and that constant stream of consciousness from these characters and this changing in time and POV it almost makes you feel out of breath reading it and then it comes to the part where you have the dialogue between the characters that I said the panther is not giving and the panther for me is still not giving it's on purpose but at the same time it's on purpose in a way that for me it's not working because you go from this giant paragraph where you feel so out of breath and then you have this dialogue that feels so choppy and sometimes it's kind of difficult to follow even though it's very short because it's just so choppy and different from the rest of the narrative it can be kind of shocking and another thing i want to add that i forgot to add but another reason that this the writing is reminding me of virginia wolf is not only this stream of consciousness but also it, re it is reminding me a bit of the lake the, the lakes is a Taylor Swift song. It's The Waves by Virginia Woolf in the sense that you keep changing characters without necessarily having a clear hey, this is a new POV. So if you get a little bit distracted, you might miss that. Maybe some people might really enjoy that. I'm sure some people might really enjoy that for me. The Waves is the one novel by Virginia Woolf I didn't enjoy. I thought I would be able to sit here and read this whole novel in one go because it is short and fast but I don't know it's kind of like the long paragraphs it's it's kind of kind, kind of tiring for me it's not yeah I'm kind of tired I it's like a little bit of brain fog I feel like I can't appreciate the rest of this novel if I continue to read it in one go so I will take a break. Hello, so it's been one day since I finished reading this book. So it was enough time to let the book sink in, the story sink in into me and let me think about it for a while. So let me just wrap this review up because I don't think I have much thing to say. Because I believe in the previous clip I already talked about what this book reminds me of. But basically, I have my notes here, okay? <laughs> I always have my notes, right? But this story I thought was an interesting exploration of grief and loneliness. And when I bought the book, the description said this was supposed to be a hallucinatory story and it indeed is. It has this feeling of a hallucination. But for me, it felt at the same time this could be some kind of hallucination due to loneliness and the grief. The, the woman, Sin, I don't want to pronounce her name wrong. Sinina. Sinina. At the same time, it could be something that is a hallucination due to grief. But at the same time, I couldn't help but feel like this could also be a hallucination because she took some drugs, she took some hallucinatory mushrooms something like that because it was just so weird and bizarre at times and there were a lot of merging of timelines and things that logically she couldn't she couldn't be seen or hearing and she wouldn't even have witnessed never in her life so it is indeed a hallucination but it can be a hallucination because she's going crazy but it could also be a hallucination because she's on drugs <laughs> I don't know, each person can have their take, right? <laughs> there was this eerie hallucination feel and I think 
realizing that it makes me feel like it was even more purposeful the very long paragraphs and phrases that it almost makes you feel overwhelmed and out of breath when you're reading but overall the writing and the storytelling they are great and i think a lot of people might love that because it is written the story i believe it achieves what it wants to achieve but personally this just isn't my style of writing it's not something i vibe well with as i said this book reminds me of the wave by virginia wolf which i read i don't know how many books by virginia wolf i read so far but the wave is the only book by her that i ever read that i didn't enjoy so there is this stylistic thing about the book that for me is just not for me and i don't think this author isn't necessarily for me so i gave it three stars because of these reasons and that's it for my review of alice alice at the abyss no alice at the fire 